Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you again to DNC Labor Council Chair Stuart Applebaum and Vice Chair Carrie Pugh. Uh, for those of you who were here with us Monday, we are back with another panel to talk about the courageous sacrifices of frontline workers and John Costa, International President of the Amalgamated Transit Union. Obviously, the mishandling has also affected the riding public and your members who are interacting on a daily basis and on the front lines. Can you tell us a little bit about how the mishandling by the president has affected them and why would Joe Biden uh, make a difference? Thank you, Liz, and thank you, everybody. Uh, yes, his mishandling, his lack of leadership, no compassion uh, has put on my 200,000 members out there in the US and Canada but more, more or less in the U.S. Um, I have 82, 83 members as of yesterday passed away to this virus. I have uh, thousands, over a thousand infected, uh, quarantined. Uh, this president ha has no clue on what he's doing. He, uh, he uh, handled this. It's shameful how he handled this. And uh, quite honestly, as an American, embarrassing. Um, and uh, it is very important that uh, he does not get four more years. Uh, as far as the transit agencies, my members are heroes out there, going out there afraid every day, moving the front line, workers like the nurses, nurses, the grocery workers. It's, uh, it's very hard uh, leading my members out there that are afraid every day, that not only for themselves, but their families coming home with this virus and, and uh, possibly spreading it. But this president uh, has to go. And our union and our executive board very early on endorsed Biden. We believe Joe cares about working people, no working people, has a heart. This president has not made a comment about the transportation workers out there, hasn't made a remark on the good job they're doing, the fear they have, no concerns whatsoever. Um, it's terrible that uh, in America today, we look at a leader that has no clue on what he's doing. He's, he says, drink Clorox. You know, it is what it is. It's gonna go away. They gave us no masks. They gave us no PPE. In fact, they told us we didn't need it. Our drivers are overexposed very early on and nothing was done as far as PPE. Our union had to take the position, make demands, threaten to strike, shut down, not move. And this wasn't easy. We didn't want to hurt the economy. We knew we had to keep our medical field out there working to save lives. It's terrible what he has done. And like I said, early on, we're supporting Joe Biden, the Biden-Harris ticket. And um, we need that to happen. We need everybody to go out there and vote. I know that Greyhound uh, and other inner city bus companies have been devastated by COVID-19 and ATU is advocating for relief money for the motor coach industry, um, which was not part of the CARES Act. So tell us more about why this service is so important to the public and to your members. Uh, yes, Liz, it is very important to the public and to my members, uh, as you said, the CARES Act did help us uh, and with our PPE, even though we had to take a position and train our, all our business agents on what the law was because uh, many of the agencies just thought it was free money that they could utilize and offset their budgets, uh, especially in the private sector. Um, so uh, unfortunately, the CARES Act did not have any money for over the road and along with school bus. Uh, so in our over the road, we have like Greyhound, uh, thousands of our members are laid off, no health care in the school bus industry, the same. Um, they're uh, laid off, no health care. And um, at a time like this with no health uh, care, it's alarming. So um, unfortunately, uh, our Congress and our, our leadership uh, uh, did the right thing in one area, but forgot the others. So, um, you know, over the road is very important. You know, I, I live in Jersey, New York City. Many of our people go uh, to New York, to Broadway, to bring back the cities you're gonna need 
this service. Uh, and we're going to need our members to come back to work and we're going to need Congress to, to uh, help out and get those buses back on the road and those workers back, uh, uh, you know, in, in, into the buses and to move the people. Uh, in the school bus industry, as you know, school is opening now. We have many concerns about how that's going to affect. We hope we learn from the past. This administration, uh, I have no faith in them uh, in getting this right. So once again, we're making our demands. We're uh, training our business agents uh, and our members to organize, unify, and fight back uh, with the position that if you're not going to give us the PPE, if we're not going to uh, do social distancing, uh, we're not moving buses. Uh, we don't want to do that to the parents. We don't want to do the riders, but we believe that it's not only self safe for our members, uh, it's also safe for, for the kids. And, and at the same time, we don't want to add any of our school bus members to the list of our fallen members that we already have. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's a major concern that uh, we get some funding there and get those buses back to work. Decamp, one of the oldest uh, over-the-road bus companies in the country, has closed down its doors, leaving over uh, 600 members that did, uh, work, I mean, riders that did come back to work. Uh, stranded. I'm hoping that the uh, agencies like the public agencies in New Jersey and New York and the big uh, cities uh, pick it up. You know, private PPE and uh, PP, a uh, private partnerships. And, uh, you know, that all sounds good until the stock market crashes, right? You know, uh, they're supposed to bail us out. I guess Trump would think that, right? You know, the private sector is a good thing, but then when there's no uh, profit in it, they close the doors, they leave. So that's why uh, transit should be public. That's why it is public. It, it's, a, it's essential to, uh, to our economy. So I'm hoping that they will pick up and, and uh, put some of these buses out there and express buses and uh, move our communities and keep them alive for those that need uh, transportation because not everybody can afford a car. And especially with now uh, with no work, we, we need it more than ever. So I'm hoping that uh, uh, the governors uh, do look at that and uh, force those agencies to start picking up that service and moving its uh, residents and uh, supporting those communities to uh, keep working and being able to pay their mortgage and their electric bills and their food on the table. Uh, so I'm hoping uh, Biden and Harris, uh, once they get in there, they fix this. And uh, I know Joe knows uh, transit, he knows it best. And that's uh, one of the one of the important things about this election. We got to get this nut out of, out of well, I'll call it a nut house right now. <laughs> Thank you so much, John. Thank you for your powerful voice and for providing the leadership that we need and emboldening workers to stand up. Um, appreciate you.